Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode, so you get an idea of how to start building your own mobile backends, we're going to demonstrate how to create a MCS mobile backend via the MCS user interface. G'day, I'm Chris Muir, I work for the Oracle Mobile Platform team. So for the purposes of this episode, let's say you are a mobile developer, hey, you just got a pay rise, building a mobile app for a transport logistics company where your truck drivers drive through many local cities and towns when traveling between destinations. Now the weather has a large impact on the routes, or routes, 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 the truck drivers take. So as part of the mobile app, we want to report the current weather conditions by location, allowing the drivers to reroute, reroute, around poor weather. Because you've chosen to use MCS, your colleagues have already created a raft of platform APIs and custom APIs, which includes a custom API called Local Weather, that itself calls out via MCS Connector to a paid weather service. Now you're free to make use of this Local Weather custom API in your app too. So in context to this MCS episode, it is your task that is the mobile developer's task to create and configure a MCS mobile backend to expose the required MCS APIs. So let's have a look at how you would do this and in the follow-up videos we'll show you how to test this too. For the purposes of keeping this video brief and focused on just mobile backends, we won't show you how to create the custom APIs now or the MCS connector either. We're going to focus on creating the back end and exposing a custom API that has been already reconfigured. While this might seem a little contrived, this scenario may occur in your real development efforts too, where there is maybe a MCS service developer who focuses on building the APIs, while the MCS mobile developer looks at configuring the mobile back ends, exposing the APIs, but they're not interested in the nitty gritty details of how the actual APIs were implemented themselves. So after logging into the MCS user interface or UI and opening the developer portal, we select the mobile backends option to see any pre-created mobile backends. Here you can see a number of mobile backends that have already been created. As you can see, there is a list of mobile backends by name listed on the left-hand side, along with their version and their status, draft or published. In addition, you can see the environments this mobile backend has been deployed to, in this case, just development rather than our staging or production environments, as well as a history of the changes. All of these concepts have to do with the life cycle of the mobile backend, and in a later episode, the life cycle of MCS objects is covered in detail. But it's not too hard to understand what the concepts of versioning, history, draft, published, and deployments mean for the average developer. Returning to our goal to publish the local weather custom API through a mobile backend, let's create a brand new mobile backend for our new application called Truck Logistics. On creating a mobile backend, you give it a name and a description, and it will default to version 1 and draft status. The name is an important identifier in MCS and will be used in numerous locations. Like regular programming constructs, there are restrictions on what characters you can use in this name, and definitely spaces are not allowed. From here, this opens the mobile backend editor pages, starting on the settings page. Separate to the settings option, notice all the other tab options down the left hand side of the screen. Over the complete set of these videos, you will learn all about these options. But for now, the options we are interested in for the mobile backend are the settings, APIs, and users options. When you start working with a mobile backend, the settings tab is one of the most important as it reveals various facts about the mobile backend, such as the base URL that a mobile app should use to call the backend remotely, the authentication keys the app should use, as well as how to register the remote mobile apps per mobile platform. The APIs tab allows us to expose any custom APIs that have been defined in MCS previously to provide services written in Node.js. We'll demonstrate using a custom API in a moment. Finally, the Users tab is used to define a realm of users and roles that have access to the mobile backend. This represents the real mobile app users, not developers using the MCS user interface. 
in terms of realms, typically you would create a realm per mobile backend containing the brand new set of users for your mobile application. For demonstration purposes here, we'll create an exclusive truck logistics realm and create a mobile user for testing our mobile backend in a moment. Once our realm is created, via the users tab, we'll then select our newly created realm. Then we'll create a new user by clicking the new user button and we're gonna call this user Big Mac. And for our purposes here during the demonstration, we'll also create a new role called the local weather role, which we'll use to give our mobile users access to the local weather custom API in a moment. It's worth noting when you manually create a user, you cannot set the password. Rather, an email is sent to the user to do this through an alternative user interface. We'll just assume Big Mac's password is welcome one star for the purposes of this video. Finally, having created the realm and user, we return to the mobile backend and now associate the mobile backend with the new realm we just created, acknowledging the warning in the dialog. So at this point, we've created our mobile backend, a realm and a user. Our next job is to expose the local weather MCS custom API we created earlier through the mobile backend that we just defined. If we back off to the top level MCS user interface development tab and select connectors, you'll see we have a local weather con connector already defined amongst a set of available connectors. In turn, if we go to the top level and then select custom APIs, Amongst a set of available custom APIs, we can see the predefined custom API called Local Weather, which has been written in Node.js to access the Local Weather Con connector we just saw. It's this custom API we want to expose through the mobile backend, so let's see how we do that now. So we return to the mobile backend and select the mobile backend trucking logistics we just created, followed by selecting the API tab. From here, we click the Select APIs button, and from there, we have the list of APIs we can use, and we select the local weather API we're specifically interested in by clicking the plus button. Returning to the mobile backend via the breadcrumb, we can now see the APIs exposed through the mobile backend. There is one final configuration for the custom API. In selecting the Edit button, and then drilling into the Custom API Security tab, we need to decide if the API is secured or not. If we choose secured, then we need to supply one or more roles that are allowed to access the API. In our example, we will enter the local weather role we created earlier. Alternatively, if we select unauthenticated, the unsecure option, we don't need to enter any role at all. For our demonstration purposes here, we'll leave this requiring the local weather role. We then press save to save all our work, then select the take me back link here. So there you go, now you've got a fair idea of what's involved in creating a mobile backend. Wasn't too complicated, was it? One of the beauties of MCS, it's really easy to create things. Now I highly encourage you, and it's a very good idea, to check out our next episode where we're going to show you how to start testing your MCS mobile backends, even though we haven't actually showed you how to build a mobile application yet. Thanks for joining us. Hope to catch you in that next episode soon.